Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. Today we're going to play with strobes on Geek Mobile Unit 1. Now Geek Mobile Unit 1 used to have a full strobe set up with strobes mounted hidden in all the marker lights and these are like full size fire truck strobes. The car was stolen a few years ago back when we were in Keizu and during the 6-8 months that the car was gone they ripped all the computers out of it and the strobes and all pretty much everything electronic in the car was destroyed. We've got the car back, we've had it here for a while now, and we've decided to start tinkering. So, we found a duplicate strobe power supply, which is a Whelan model UPS 60, and this has four strobe outputs, and there's like this rubber thing. You can see the four strobe outputs right here. There's two and there's two. We're gonna upgrade this. We just got it in there, we got it tested. The strobe heads still work. We installed two new heads on the back. The original pod strobes are still on the back, mounted under the, under the spare tire mount. We've got a, a pod unit, it's part of a light bar. And then up front we've got the hidden strobes and the turn signals. One of those is working, the other one isn't, and I think that might be the strobe power supply. So I got looking, I got digging, and I came up with this. That's the new hotness right now. That, that's badass. Check that out. That's a six head strobe power supply from Federal Signal. It's a ricochet. It is a model 41306 ricochet strobe head power supply and it's just, this thing is awesome. It's got variable patterns and all kinds of stuff. So what I figured to be fun, because I was just going to install this in car and do a thing, but I'm like, you know, we can make a video on this. And we could take this apart and look inside because it's really cool. And we could take the other one out of the car and take that apart and look inside that and compare the two and then we can install this in a car and compare the differences and how well they work. So we've got old and busted and the new hotness. So you guys stay tuned, we'll be back and we're gonna go into the studio, put this on a bench and have a look inside and dig into this stuff. So we'll be back right after this. While the bulk of Geek Group's donations come from corporate sponsors, viewers like you contribute substantially through thousands of individual micro donations. You can donate anywhere from 20 cents to $20 or more, helping us educate and improve our community and the world. Open your mind for less. Announcing the Geek Group Kickabuck program. All right, we're back. We're here in the fabulous Cayenne Mountain set. We've got our awesome overhead camera and you can see like super detailed in there. Look, you can see little diodes. Hello? That's a full wave bridge rectifier right there. So we've got this all set up and we're going to take a look here first at our Whelan UPS 60 strobe power supply. Now this is a four output unit. You can see there's only four. It's got spaces for more so it could have eight probably in a higher model but this one only has four. And then there's our power input here, and this is power and control. That's the only plugs it has. It has this plug for power and control, and then these four that go out to the strobes, and that's it. And it's got the big rubber gasket thing that goes over it. And if you look down on the bottom, you can see the little asterisk. Doesn't it look like a Kurt Vonnegut asterisk? There's your lit geek humor there. So, yep, those are the, the weather seals. And we've got the whole unit here. It's pretty simple. It's uh, just an extruded aluminum case with end caps. So I was going to pop off one of the end caps and we'll get a look inside and we'll compare it to the other one. Now this is several years old. This thing really could be like 80s vintage for all I know. It's had a long abused life. Sound guy loves it when I do that. Now we'll pop the end off here. And we've got, doesn't it look like a piezo buzzer or something from the outside? I don't know what that is. Maybe we can figure it out as we dig in. Now this one was plugged in recently, so I'm gonna be pretty careful with it because these will bite you. Now down inside, it's just, it really is just an aluminum extrusion. That's all one piece. It's a custom aluminum extrusion. And then there's the end caps and you can see the end caps just bolt on. So they're really simple construction. We've got a piece of paper, which is, here's the label. 
which I have never seen before. <laughs> it's been buried down in there. And then just a piece of black insulating plastic. We've got a very simple circuit board. You want to be really careful because there's a couple gnarly capacitors on here. These are 300 volts each. There's a pair of them wired in series. If you look at the end, you can see those are series. So this is putting out 600 volts at least. And you can see we've got a transformer. There's a little relay down here. A small cap, probably a power supply cap. And then we've got this down here. It's a GE D44H11, rather serious resistor. There's, there's some neat parts here. We've got, here's that full wave bridge over here. There's another diode over here. There's actually three. You can see them tucked down in their diodes. We've got, what are you? Can't figure out what these are, but maybe somebody out there can figure it out. We'll look at the bottoms. Oh, it's a relay. So you can see it right there. So if you look on the bottom, it's got eight pins, so that's a relay. Nice basic circuit board. I'm trying to find some kind of, oh, hey, we've got a date code right there. We look up over on this side, and we can see it says 94 version 0. So that's probably 1994 when they built this board, or when they designed it at least. So yeah, it's a, it's a 90s vintage unit. Now I'm going to take a minute and put this back together, and we'll come back and have a look at the other one. All right, so now we're going to take a look and compare that to the Federal Signal Ricochet 6-head power supply 413106. They never named these cool things. It's, you know, 413106. You never hear it named Cletus or something like that. You guys should try that, okay, Federal Signal. Next model should be named Cletus. So what we've got, this one, first off, right away, you'll notice, it doesn't have the rubber cover. Like, this one's got the rubber cover. And it's just, and you got to, like, wedge it in place. And it's kind of a pain because if you look close, you can see it has to go, there's, there's a line that it has to fit over. And then you got to tuck this thing down in, which is a serious pain. I've never done, I've had one of these in the car for years and we've never had that over there and tucked in there at the same time. It's just, it's a pain to do it. Now here on the Federal Signal, it's just, it's this plastic thing and it just pops right up. Totally seals it, it latches in place, like there's, there's a latch, you can pick it up from it and it won't open. But you just pop it, opens right up. Keeps everything protected and covered nice, I love it. So let's open it up and see how they built it. It's probably very similar. I really expect this to just be pretty much a circuit card in the bottom. Three screws, end pops right off. Look, you can see the whole thing right in there. I'll show you guys in the close-up. Check out the differences in the extrusion. It's really nice. You can see right in there. Now this, this is a lot newer model. Slide that out. Keep our screws. We'll take the whole thing right out. Oh, no, there's one screw on the back. I got a little clamp thing. I need a smaller screwdriver. Grab me a number one Phillips, please. Thank you. All right, there's one little screw on the back here that holds a power regulator or something like that. This is designed to work on 12 or 24 volts, so it would make sense that they'd have a little power regulator. So there's four screws we took out. Let's see if I can slide this out just as easily as the other one. I don't know that I can, but we'll try. I can grab that. No, nope, I can't. That has to come out separately. So we'll take the wires out because those won't pass through the thing. And this was, this is obviously surplus, and they ripped it out of a fire truck. Somebody just cut it off the end or something when they did upgrades for the county or whoever owned it. So we take all those out, take the plugs out,
There's our power plug. Three pin Molex plugs are famously hard to unplug. They're in there. Okay, got the plugs out, that was fun. This one, stripped the wire out with it and it went. So whoever did that crimp connection didn't do a very good job. Okay, got all the plugs out. Let's see if we can slide the board out or if it's glued in there or anything. These are the bottom screws. These screws go right up into, you can see in the side of the board, there's these little slots right here, and right there, right there. And there are screws on the bottom that go up into those slots. So we have to take these out. Ah, and they're in there. Now this should slide out. I don't think there's anything else holding it in. Yeah, I think that's it. Let's see if I can grab it and slide it out. There we go. Wow, that's radically different. Check that out. Modern green circuit board on the back. Um, the only code at all I see on the back is 130513-1A. And we know that this is, the model number is 413106. So that's not a model number. Oh, there's a date code right there, one of 06. So now we know when it was made. It was made by the Federal Signal Corporation. And let's take a look around the board. We've got input down here. 15 amp power supply, or 15 amp fuse. The, these are the power inputs, H2 and H1. And that's uh, ground on top is H2, power is H1, and that's either 12 or 24 volts. And they come right over to this big ferrite ring. So that's our noise suppression there, because this is, it's, it's a high frequency power supply. It uses flybacks and that. You can see the transformers over here. It's just a very fast switched power supply. Now, one of the cool things that I like on this, you'll notice the caps are a lot smaller, too. They're 450 volts, but they're a lot physically smaller than the old ones, and that's because the capacitor technology has gotten a lot better. Now, there's a little computer chip over here. So this is all digitally controlled. You can have different flash patterns. It's, it's actually pretty smart. You can see a little crystal there. That'll probably be a timing reference. Down here, we've got the I.O. port. You can use this to clone them and you know change settings and stuff like that. Down here, this is power and control input. Or no, these are all just control. Sorry, I'm used to power and control being on the same thing, but we've got power comes in over here on the mains. These are all just controls. These two buttons here are, this is to select the output pair, and this is to select the flash patterns for programming. And then you've got six strobe outputs here. So it's just like the other one where we had four, only we have another pair. And this is a really cool feature. See the lights down here? There's LEDs. When each one, when this triggers, now this goes out at like 1,000 volts. It's, it's high voltage for triggering the flash. When that triggers, it's also wired 
together with a, a lower voltage thing here with this LED so that when that fires, this LED flashes. And this is really, really handy if you're setting this up on a bench and you don't have strobes or if you're in the vehicle and these are wired off because the strobes are 10 feet away and they're on the outside of the vehicle and you're inside working on it. This will let you see what you're doing. So it really helps a lot. It's a cool system. So that's a look at the differences inside. This one is way better. It's the new hotness and I'm digging it. So I'm going to put all this back together and then we're going to go out and install it in the car and check out how it works. All right, so we've got it all back together there. I'm keeping my pigtail separate. I've got to run to the auto parts store and get some crimp connectors because we don't have them in that size. My plan is I'm going to get this wired up and working so that you guys can see the happy, happy blinking lights. And then we'll end the video at that point because I'm going to hand it off to Batman who's going to do the mounting of this to the actual bulkhead. And to do that, we've got to put the car in the hoist because we need to measure clearances because you don't want to like drill a hole through and hit the gas tank or something like that. So the goal today is just get this installed and working and checked out. And that's it. It's fun. So let's go make some blinking lights. All right, so now we're back in the vehicular sciences lab. I've got the new hotness. Tools we're going to need for this are set of ratchet strippers. If you're using old school wire strippers, like the, the big flat ones that look like a pair of pliers, throw those away. They're terrible. These are what you want. Good ratchet strippers. Once you own a good pair of these, you'll never go back. We're going to need a small pair of diagonal cutters. These are known colloquially as dykes. And then I've got these, which are my good crimpers. It is no mistake that this tool and this tool are both made by Klein. If you're doing electrical work, I strongly recommend Klein tools. There is very few things in the world that are as expensive as cheap tools. Buy good ones. All right. It begins with Enos, if you would please. Pop the seat out of there. It'll get, get us all kinds of space so we can get the camera dudes in there doing their things. Rock out. All right, so this is where all of our electrical connections are. We've got our main power here, we've got our control here, and then these are going to be the strobe heads. In order to install this, what I need to do is wire up the main power feeds. Now we've got the, here's our old control wire, and on this the main power feeds were built into it, and we've got our hot and ground there, so we're going to wire those in. These are wired in with uh, pop-offs before, so we're going to just redo these. I've got more of these in stock. And that'll be our control circuit. Now, the cool thing is, all the strobes on this use a three-pin Molex. Well, they were nice, and for the control circuit, they used a four-pin Molex on the unit right here. You can see the four-pin Molex plug right down in there. That's it. This is a P7 plug from a standard computer power supply, and it happens to fit perfectly. Ta-da! So, that lets us have a shiny new plug with some butt connectors, and we can hook this right up. So I'm going to get all this put together, so follow along, we'll rock out, we're going to wire in the new control plug, and I've got four strobes already wired up that we had going, and that's these two, and these two are our existing strobes, and then these nice shiny new wires right here, these are the new strobe heads, and these were just installed, we've never tested them yet, so these are brand new strobe heads, brand new wires, all brand new stuff. And I'm going to get this wired up. I've got to put ends on them. I'm going to reuse a couple of the old ends because I don't have any of the three-pin Molex in stock. So they cut off the old ones and supplied them with a the unit. So I'm just going to make use of the old ones. So follow along and let's rock out. All right, so the red wire is our always on hot. This is a main power feed from the battery of the car. So we're going to start with that. Now for this to work right, it has to feed always on hot into the unit and it has to feed an always on hot to the control units. The, this is the umbilical that goes up to the switches mounted right here, and these control what comes on and when. So this hot feeds out to them, and then these all come back from there, and we're just going to make a whole new unit right here. One of the great staples of automotive electrical is the crimp connector, which are these little tubey things. And you just strip your wire about that far for this size. Slide it in there and you'll feel it hit the little stop in the middle. Line it up with your thing and squeeze. Now when you do these, inside the tube, there's going to be a seam on one side. And when you crimp them, you want to have the seam, like if, if, if the inside of the tube is like that. If you look at your crimpers, there's, there's this here and it's marked for insulated. Okay, And then there's the non-insulated one. I use the non-insulated anvil for everything because it makes a tighter connection. And when you've got your little tube inside, you'll see a seam. It's really easy to spot. 
you want to have these set up like that so that the seam part is in the pocket side of the crimper so it crushes in like that. That's a thing to remember. You'll come across that a lot when you're dealing with any kind of automotive electrical. I always end up doing crimp connectors. I never really use these anywhere else, but man, you work on cars and they're everywhere. And if you do them right, if you really care, like if you're doing serious stuff, you can just heat shrink them and make them all nice. They can be made pretty decent. It is, though, as a rule, one of the more weedly types of connectors. But they work all right for this kind of stuff. All right, guys, so now we've got our wiring in place. This is just temp stuff. I haven't heat shrinked or taped up or anything like that. This is just in here. When it's all done, these will lay down through the spots, but I don't want to do that until we've got it mounted and we know exactly where it's going to go. So this is just testing. But at this point, I can actually fire it up, and you'll be able to see the lights down here as this cycles through. You can see it's doing things. As you activate different control circuits, different things happen for different ports. We'll fire up all three. That's really cool. Now every time one of these LEDs flashes, one of the strobes on the back flashes, and we've got two strobes that aren't working, but those are problems in the car or electrical, so we've got to sort this out. And these are old original ones, so they may have been damaged when the car was stolen or something like that. We don't know, but we've got one out on each corner on opposite ends of the car. So we're going to mess with this. We're going to dig into it. And when it's all done, we'll be back, and you guys can see the finished light show. All right, so now it's 1942 hours. We've got it in. It still needs more tweaking. We'll be back to mess with this later because I need some better bulbs. But we've got the unit test mounted. It's just sitting there, but there's all the wires hooked up. Now, I told you when it ran, you'd see the blinking light. So here, I'll fire it up. Now look inside. You can see the lights come on. And those are the LEDs, and the LEDs fire every time one of the outlets fires. So if I go to a different pattern, you'll see it change, like that. And then the low priority pattern is just the back two. So we'll put it on high priority, and now we have working lights up in the front. You can see them over here. Works on both sides. So, that's pretty cool. And we can turn on the front lights without the back lights. Or we can put on the back lights without the front lights. So this would be fun for like events and parades and things like that. That's where we primarily use the blinking lights. But it's a fair bit of progress. We still don't have these working yet, but that's not a fault of the strobe unit. That's a fault of the crappy strobe lights we have. And I'll see if I can find one of those and show you guys. Ah, here. Here's what the actual strobe lights look like. They're kind of cool. It's a little pigtail strobe. And this one just wore out. This is one of the original ones that was put on a car back in 2003. So it's got a lot of miles on it. And we put all new lights in. And one of the new lights, when it went in, it tweaked the wire here and it pulled the wire out because it was like it was installed in a car like that because it was a body panel. So it pulled the wire out. So we got to get some better lights. We got to get some better connectors. There's special plugs for all these, but we don't have any of the plugs. So we're just cutting and stripping the wires and hooking them together with butt connectors. So it gets better. But for just basic operation, this is good. It's good enough to put it in parades and stuff like that. So you guys have fun. That's your basic look at how fire truck strobes work. These are the same strobes they use on fire trucks and a lot of police cars. Though nowadays most of them use LEDs, so you know, these are cooler. So you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.